Welcome to Canada Conversations, part of Delaware Debates 2014, produced by Delaware Public Media in collaboration with the University of Delaware's Center for Political Communication. I'm Delaware Public Media News Director Tom Byrne. This conversation, taped on the campus of Delaware State University, focuses on the race for State Attorney General, and we are joined by the Independent Party of Delaware candidate, David Graham. David, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Well, let's start with, why did you decide to run for Attorney General? Well, the Attorney General of Delaware is the chief law enforcement officer of the state of Delaware. He supervises the battalion of t attorneys, deputy attorney generals, who uh, prosecute um, laws that are violated in the state of Delaware. And for you, what do you feel separates you from the other candidates that are running for Attorney General? Well. Number one is I work almost on a daily basis with the deputy attorney generals in the Carville office building. I'm on the eighth floor. The attorney general's office is right immediately below me, even share the restrooms with them. <laughs> and uh, I, I know them and I know how hard they work. And uh, what separates me from the other uh, two candidates for attorney general, there's a Republican and a Democrat. The Democrat is a career politician and part of the establishment. And the uh, Republican candidate, which he was, came out after they couldn't get anyone else to be on the ticket, uh, is severely limited as an experience in that he's only been a business law litigator. Mm -hmm. You mentioned experience. How important is it for the Attorney General to have uh, prosecutorial experience in your mind? Well, first of all, the Attorney General position is a management and leadership mm -hmm. position. Even the attorney, the current attorney general of Delaware, Bo Biden, who elected not to run for re-election because I actually ran against him in four years ago as a write-in candidate when the Republicans didn't put anyone up. Uh, and he, in a, a news article interview, News Journal says, no, you don't have to be a lawyer to supervise the lawyers in the attorney general's office. And I have uh, chief executive experience uh, in the private sector. Uh, and as a C licensed Delaware CPA, I actually prosecute, I'm a part of the tax enforcement unit. The skill set to prosecute violations of tax law, the same skill set you use to violate any of the other laws of the state of Delaware, same process. Let's talk about some issues. Uh, the level of violent crime in Wilmington has received a great deal of attention. Uh, if elected, how do you plan on helping reduce that level of violent crime there and elsewhere in the state? Well. It's, it's a, that's a good question because mm -hmm. I thought, I was hoping you were going to ask that question because CPAs are wired a little bit different than lawyers. As a CPA, we're supposed to make sure that honest people stay honest. Mm -hmm. Go to the cause of the problem first, whereas lawyers have a tendency to do the back end approach. Okay, the law is violated, now let's go after them. So uh, to, to keep the, the, question, the answer short is uh, the, the real solution to our violent crime, it's community-based. We have to, to do things at the community level that um, stop these things from occurring in the first place. Heroin is a, a terrible epidemic in, in this uh, state. Um, and the communities are only as strong as the churches and the fire companies and the community groups. So you have to actively involve them at the front end. and, and uh, it's going to take years to undo the damage that's been done by the political establishment of Delaware. What plans do you have to improve the state's ability to prevent crimes against the, the more vulnerable communities, whether they be children or, or the elderly? Well, um, you have to give uh, credit to current Attorney General Bo Biden. He's, he's come out swinging on child predators. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a baptized member of the Kenton Methodist Church, and I'm on the Pastor Parish Committee, so I'm integrally involved with the functioning of that church. Um, and they have what's called a safe harbor, pr safe harbor program. And that's to identify upfront people that are sus under suspicion and right away bring it to their attention. For, and one rule they have in the Methodist church is anyone who works with the youth is not allowed to be there by themselves. Mm -hmm. They always have to have another adult. And that's for their protection as well, sure. someone else's. So uh, it, it gets back to the base. Let's look at the root cause of our problems. Let's not look at the solutions at the back end. 
we have to deal with them once those occur as attorney general you prosecute but uh, I would be more proactive in working with the, with the community how about uh, protecting state residents from a new form of crime that we see a lot more now and that is uh, identity theft cyber crime other internet based crime well th and there again the, the current attorney general deserves the credit for being on the the cutting edge of that type of thing um, I, I have a concern because I see it every day as it might function over super supervising the business auditors. Uh, I think we need to, for senior citizens, to protect them from the predatory contractors. Uh, we don't, we don't, we don't regulate contractors in this state, and I'm, uh, I'm not advocating more laws or anything. But certainly, as attorney general, we can make sure that we have more education and that work in coordination with the tax enforcement unit of our state government who are on the front line of these issues when they come up to readily identify contractors who are taking advantage of seniors. We hear stories every day uh, about you know the contractors taking money and then disappearing and not doing the work and senior citizens are vulnerable. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the role of the Attorney General in judicial reform. Um, perhaps more broadly, how active should the office be in crafting or advocating for changes in policy regarding the judicial system? Well, one of the, 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 the things, and it's one of my issues in the Attorney General's race, is that we have to look at having a constitutional amendment to make the Attorney General's position an appointed one by the governor, of course, with confirmation by the Senate, as many other states have, because when you turn it into a political office, the current uh, occupant of the office, uh, Bo Biden, is, is a career, career politician. He's already announced he's running for governor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Democratic uh, contender, he was insurance commissioner before and now a lieutenant governor. He's a career politician. Decisions coming out of the attorney general's office should be based on the law, mm -hmm. not politics. You shouldn't have to be worried about getting elected another time. So. I think if we were able to, and I would lobby the legislature on that because it takes two cycles legislature. Let's change the Constitution. That's, uh, the Attorney General's office is only as good as the Attorney General. And we need to change that. And, and other states have done it that way. All right. David Graham, Independent Party of Delaware candidate for State Attorney General. We thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you very much, Tom. You can find all of our candidate conversations online at DelawarePublicMedia.org and DelawareDebates.org. Candidate conversations are taped at Delaware State University and are part of Delaware Debates 2014, produced by Delaware Public Media in collaboration with the University of Delaware's Center for Political Communication. I'm Delaware Public Media News Director Tom Byrne. Thanks so much for joining us.